Uh, okay, so if you identify with your gender at birth, you're cis, and if you don't, you're trans, and it's that simple, right? Well, I thought so, but there's actually been a discussion, like a, a dialogue going around YouTube at the moment. Herb Diner did a huge collab with a bunch of non-binary users, and a lot of them didn't identify as trans, nor did they identify as cis, and I thought that was really interesting. And so I was thinking about it, and it kind of makes sense in a lot of different ways. So when I first moved to Melbourne, I was a pizza chef for a while. So technically you could say, yes, this is Britta, they are a pizza chef. But it wasn't something I identified with, even though it was technically true, I guess, it wasn't something I'd introduce myself as, like, hi, my name's Britta, my pronouns are they, then theirs, I'm a pizza chef. It wasn't something that was integral to my identity. But now I'm working in uh, the film industry or the video industry. I do wedding videos mostly, but I also do a lot of first day singing for uh, TVCs and short films. And I'm actually doping a feature right now, which I'll talk about on my channel later. Um, so I identify as a cinematographer. That's an integral part of my identity. So when I was a pizza chef, yeah, technically I was a pizza chef, but it wasn't something I'd identify myself as, if that makes sense, whereas now I'm a cinematographer and it's something I would identify myself as. So even if you can describe someone using a word that might be accurate, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's part of their identity. So there's a difference between like descriptive terminology and identities, I guess. Um, the other thing which one of the users brought up, which was really interesting, was you'd you'd probably read them as a woman if you were a binary person walking in the street. If you're a binary cis person walking around in the street, you'd see them, you'd read them as a woman. Now, they identify as non-binary, but they said that if they introduce themselves as a trans person, people will immediately assume that they're assigned male at birth and have transitioned to present femininely or female. I don't really like that terminology, but you know what I mean. And, you know, that's not their experience. They're not assigned male at birth. They don't have that transition experience. So they feel like if they describe themselves as trans or someone, they either have to uh, justify that or further explain what that means to them. Or, you know, if, if they don't want to have that conversation, if they describe themselves as trans, they feel like they might be misleading someone because people will jump to conclusions. And yeah, sure, it's not their fault that people are jumping to conclusions, um, but, you know, they're aware that that might happen and they don't want to mislead people about their experiences. I also know of some binary trans people who, once they feel they've fully transitioned or they're passing, whatever that means, um, they describe themselves as a person of trans experience, but they don't think of themselves as a trans person. Like, there's this guy, Michael. Hi, my name's Michael. I'm a guy. I have a trans experience, but he doesn't identify as trans. I'm an atheist. But I don't go around identifying myself as an atheist. It's not a core part of my identity. Whereas I know some atheists, like, I think Richard Dawkins is the famous one. And that that actor guy, the, the, the gay British man you know, they kind of openly identify themselves as atheists and that's a big part of their identity. For me, yeah, I'm an atheist, but identifying as an atheist for me would mean that I'm interested in placing myself within the social constructions of religion. And I'm not, so I don't know if identifying as trans is something that I want to continue to do. Additionally, if I introduce myself as trans, like that other person said, I would probably, given my presentation, people would probably assume I was a trans man. Obviously non-binary trans identities are getting a lot more publicity, but I also think for me, non-binary covers it. Agender covers it. I don't agree with assigning gender to people I also wanted to talk about situational identification. So I was talking for ages about whether I was a lesbian, whether I was non-binary, trans, whatever, um, all these labels. And there seems to be this kind of idea that once you pick a label, it has to stick with you, at least for a while. You know, people are saying, oh, you can identify as 
as a lesbian and then later on bisexual if you realize that that's how you identify as or vice versa or whatever but um these ideas that your identities change situationally um i think people kind of disagree with because they think that it's kind of inauthentic and for me i experience sexism i still experience that i haven't been catcalled in a while that might be because i'm being read as male so i probably experienced less sex sexism than feminine presenting people but i still got turned down for a job because of my gender which by the way is illegal um but it was this weird loophole where it was like a, a third party company doing the hiring so it was a bit shit and also I, I work in the film industry and especially as a cinematographer, women are really underrepresented. And so when I talk about women in cinematography and women in the film industry, I include myself in that because there's a discussion happening around, you know, women directing or creating films and what kind of impact that has on the final productions. But then I also experience homophobia, homophobia, queerphobia that I experience. And then in other situations as a gender diverse person, people get angry at me for not presenting female enough. Um, and this is a problem that a lot of butchers have, but then additionally in some other contexts I get read as trans or I'm with a group of trans people or you know my, my top surgery comes up and that becomes a point of contention and I don't feel bad for utilizing these identities when they're relevant to me because for me, because I experience the neg negative side of these identities, I experience sexism and homophobia and transphobia and whatever it's called when people hate on gender non-conforming people, then, you know, because I experience all the negative sides of these identities, I don't feel guilty or bad or inauthentic in discussing the positive sides of them or attempting to utilize them to improve my life. So I feel like identities a lot more convoluted and a lot more four-dimensional than people talk about. The other thing about this trans or cis discussion is there are people who identify as gender questioning or unsure. It gives people that space to not quite be certain. But the idea is that if you identify as cis, then you're quite happy with your assigned gender. And if you identify as trans, then you're very sure that you're not your assigned gender and probably know what gender or lack of gender works for you. Whereas there might be some people who say they're AFAB and they say, I'm a woman. No, that doesn't feel like the truth. People ask, what does it mean to feel like a woman? What does that even mean to feel like a man? How do people know this? I think all it boils down to is saying, I'm a woman. No, that doesn't feel right. Or I'm a woman. Yeah, that feels like the truth. I think that's all it boils down to. So you might say, I am assigned gender. No, that doesn't feel like the truth it doesn't sit well with me, but you don't know what other gender you may or may not be. And also you're not interested. So they might be assigned female at birth. They might say, I am a woman. And they might be like, mm, that's a bit weird. Like that doesn't quite feel like the truth, but I'm definitely not a man either. I might be non-binary, but it's not really a priority of mine to figure out my gender. It's not something I'm interested in. You know, you might just say, well, I'm definitely not cis because that doesn't feel right. But I don't want to go around identifying as trans or announcing myself as trans because that implies that I'm certain about that. So it might just not be of interest to some people. Being uncertain or unsure might be your state of mind forever. And it doesn't have to be a huge personal conflict in your head. You might say, well, I'm not my assigned gender, but I don't really want to identify as trans because that sounds like I'm certain about that as well. Or I have some knowledge about that, having some reflection on my gender that I'm not really sure about either. That uncertainty about my gender isn't a negative thing in my life. It doesn't keep me up at night. It's not something that upsets me. And it might be a perpetual state forever, and I'm okay with that. So I don't want to enter into this discussion 
positively identifying as either trans or cis because I'm not really sure where I fit into that and I also don't care. There are some people who identify as gender meh and might not announce themselves as trans and that's totally fine as well. Finally, the last thing about the not trans or cis dialogue is people who are not trans really hating the word cis and getting angry at people calling them cis. Um, some people think cis is offensive, which is bullshit, but some people just don't identify as cis. They're like, yeah, I'm happy with the gender as assigned at birth, but I, I don't like this word cis, I don't identify with it. And we can just say, oh, well, tough luck. <clears throat> but at the same time, I mean, not identifying as trans or cis was part of this argument. And so I think if someone identifies as the gender they were assigned at birth and they identify as not trans, but don't identify with the word cis, then they can just call themselves not trans. I mean, they are synonyms. And really, I think arguing about the nitty gritty of the words isn't, isn't a point of discussion that we should, should be having. There's a lot more things we can talk about that can improve our quality of life and our human rights that don't really dwell on the terminology. The reason that cisgender was invented was to avoid the dictomy of transgender and normal. Because normal is a really dangerous word. In a lot of contexts when people refer especially to themselves as normal, there's some discrimination happening there. So that's why the word cisgender was used, to, to avoid this idea of normal and trans. But if you just identify as not trans and you realise that considering that as normal is problematic, then I personally don't have any beef with people not wanting to identify as cis. Uh, but of course, if the reason to not identify as cis is because they think that you know, there's only male and female and maybe intersex and you can't change that and that's the rules, um, then that's another discussion to be had to be had but then the contention isn't really over whether they like the term cis or not it's about the entire trans experience so in conclusion occasionally i will identify as trans um you know if i'm in spaces specifically designated for trans people i feel quite comfortable there a lot of people talk about the trans and gender diverse community and i think that that gender diverse idea can include butchers can include feminine gay men you know, homophobia is an extension of misogyny and transphobia is an extension of both of these things. I mean, the other reason I identified as trans for so long was because I had to, to my, um, my therapist, to my surgeon, to the nurses at the hospital where I got surgery. The only reason I was able to get top surgery was because trans people before me had carved this space out. Trans people and medical practitioners had made it possible. So I was following this narrative and I didn't go through pretending I was a binary man. I told them I was non-binary, told them I was agender. Um, at the time I was using she, her, her pronouns. I was quite honest about that. But I was still identifying as trans because that was the narrative that made sense to navigate the medical side of transition. And I suppose technically now my gender or sex transition is finished. <laughs> I'm at the end of my transition. That was, that was it. I got top surgery. Now I'm finished. Does that mean I'm a non-binary person with a trans experience who no longer identifies as trans? I really think that's where I've situated myself at the moment.